Let's look at the pharynx. It is a muscular passageway which connects the nasal cavity to the larynx. Here's your nasal cavity. Here is the larynx. Notice that this muscular tube runs posterior to the nasal cavity and the oral cavity. And these two cavities are then continuous to one another. As children, you have probably experienced drinking something like milk, laughing, and then having that milk come out your external nares. That's because all of this is connected. There are three regions to the pharynx, and the regions are named based on the location. The section of the pharynx that is posterior to the nasal cavity will be called the nasal pharynx. The section posterior to the oral cavity will be the oral pharynx. And the section that feeds into the larynx anteriorly and the esophagus posteriorly, this section right in here is going to be called the laryngopharynx. Food will go through the oral pharynx and the laryngopharynx on the way to the esophagus. Air will go from the nasal pharynx, oral pharynx, laryngopharynx into the larynx. The type of epithelium that you have reflects what's going through the tube. If food is going through the tube, you are going to have stratified squamous epithelium. If only air is going through the tube, you will have the ciliated pseudostratified columnar epithelium or the respiratory epithelium. This area here is going to have the pseudostratified columnar. And so will this area here, the nasal pharynx. But once you get into the oral pharynx and the laryngopharynx, you will have stratified squamous, which will continue into the esophagus. When you get into the larynx, you will have the ciliated pseudostratified columnar. So you'll have the respiratory mucosa. Let's continue with the structures in the pharynx. The auditory tube connects the nasal pharynx to the middle ear. And the opening to the auditory tube is located right here. There are several different tonsils. Recall that tonsils are lymphatic tissue. The pharyngeal tonsil, also known as your adenoid, is located right here in the nasal pharynx. The palatine tonsils, and they are paired, are located right here at the entrance into the oral pharynx. The single lingual tonsil is located right here at the base of the tongue. And the tubal tonsils will be located in this area around where the opening is to the auditory tubes. The uvula is this structure right in here. Its function is to close off the entrance into the nasal pharynx so it moves superiorly, moves up, and closes off this entrance here when you are swallowing so that whatever you're swallowing, such as milk, does not move into the nasal pharynx. And this occurs during the swallowing reflex. This should look familiar from AP1. This is the external ear, the pinna. Here is the external auditory meatus. This is your eardrum, tympanic membrane. This is your middle ear. Here is the eustachian or auditory tube. So you can see how the middle ear is connected to the nasal cavity, and this helps equalize the pressure against the tympanic membrane. You probably have heard that if you're flying and the pressure builds up against the tympanic membrane, you need to swallow, yawn, chew gum, all of that is so that you can open up the entrance here between the middle ear and the nasal cavity. So you can open this up here. In addition, because of this anatomy here, if you have 
an upper respiratory infection. If you have a bacterium that's in the nasal cavity, it can actually make its way to the middle ear.